Lily Collins and Zac Efron are two of my favorite actors and when I heard that they did a movie together I was like oh my god I have to watch it and when, at the beginning when I saw the title I was a bit judgmental I was like why in the hell is the title so long they could have just named it Ted Bundy but after watching the movie I discovered that I was completely wrong uh, I discovered that uh, the title of the movie was uh, extremely wicked shockingly evil and vile these words were the exact remarks given by the judge cohorts seconds before sentencing bendy to death i mean this is really genius and uh i, I really find these words uh suitable for the movie now i mean after watching it i've watched that movie three times now and I really hope that you'd watch it and you'd like it and you'd tell me about what you think of the actor's performance performance story in this movie. So without further ado, let's jump into the review. The story dates back to 1969 in Seattle, the United States of America, when Elizabeth Kendall, a single mom, was having a girl's night out in a local bar. One of her friends noticed a man looking at Liz, aka Elizabeth. As soon as Elizabeth or Liz turned to check whether this was right or not, her eyes met Ted's eyes. And it was love at first sight, probably thinking that this is very cliche and it's gonna end with a Cinderella marriage and kids. Well, allow me to tell you that things were only about to get messier and shittier. Let's go back to the story now. That night, Liz and Ted danced, laughed, and had so much fun. And it was the night when Elizabeth decided that Ted should be her partner in life. I mean, the man wasn't only handsome and funny. He also cooked and looked after her kids. So, he was a husband material. Is it fair to say, at least at first, that Ted Bundy was a gentleman? Oh, completely. Put a lot of energy into making us happy, doing fun things. My parents loved him. He was just really it, in my opinion. And I really wanted to marry him. Give me some of the activities that you all would do as a family together. So he had a favorite everything, a favorite restaurant, a favorite carpet store. <laughs> it was just, so he wanted to take us to all the places that he thought were cool. Went to the zoo, went to all the fun kids' things. He always seemed to embrace us as a family unit. When he was with Liz, he, he said he really enjoyed um, being a family man. He said the things that, you know, I would expect my brother to say about his family. Unfortunately for Liz, little did she knew that her partner had some sick habits. These habits been living with him for years. Ted was involved in series of kidnapping university girls, raping them, torturing them, killing them and then smashing their heads so that nobody would know the identity of his victims. According to experts, Ted Bundy's outrageous behavior was due to his grandfather Samuel Cowell, who used to hate Italians, Jews, blacks and used to beat women. As a result, Ted grew up with the ritual of practicing violence and that gave him some kind of joy and satisfaction. Ted's car, which was a Volkswagen Beetle, was a very, you know, popular car back at the 70s. And it was his ace car to attract girls. Besides that car, his style, smile, and stare were irresistible that would have made any woman talk to him and why not fall for him. College libraries, sorority parties, university parking lots were his playground. Now, some of you may ask, why didn't he hurt Liz and her daughter? Well, here's the answer. I heard a story told by one of his attorneys. He said Ted told him that he would play games with mice, and he would let some of them live and make some of them die. And to me, that's us. 
We're just these mice that we're allowed to live. That means that Ted liked being the dominant in the game of life. During that time in Seattle, crime rates were rising and the common thing was girls' bodies with smashed heads. That made families live in the fear of losing their daughters for unknown reasons. Until one day, a girl who succeeded to escape from Ted gave a full description of the criminal's physical appearance. Police then started to arrest everyone whose look matched the description. And guess what? Ted was one of them. Now I won't tell you how the police caught Ted, so it's up to you. You have to find it by yourself, so go and watch the movie. Anyways, the victim knew Ted immediately. And damn it, it was the moment Liz's Cinderella world fell apart. Liz changed from a joyful person to a careless human being who smoked and drank every day. Luckily, that didn't last so long because a nice guy who was her co-worker at the time stepped in, embraced her and accepted her for all her flaws and all the pain she was in. And he even asked Ted to not call her again. What a gentleman. You have been witness to the unspeakable horrors of the defendant's heinous crimes. You have seen ghastly injuries, smashed in faces, broken jaws. Will the defendant please rise? For years, I've carried this guilt that I'm to blame for everything. <laughs> if only I hadn't trusted you. I promise you'll never leave me, Liz. It's about another missing girl, isn't it? Ted, did you do it? is about catching a monster. I wish I could take it all back. What about me? I love you. Get out of here! You can't call her anymore. You're killing her. Did it. You do it. Did I do these things, please? At that point, Ted lost almost everything. His job, his freedom, and Liz. Suddenly, the media gave so much attention and showed so much interest in the case of Ted Bundy. It became famously a national event for millions of viewers. Again, Ted had another ace in his game. So he combined reverse psychology and interviews with journalists to manipulate the American masses to believe that he was innocent. It worked for some time, but it didn't last for too long. Because something happened. A disturbed, sick individual. You'll be the first nationally televised trial in history. You look nice, partner. I'm disguised as an attorney today. I get very scared, but, you know, he's also really dreamy. There are things you don't know that will shock you beyond your worst nightmares. It's all a lie. It is a capital murder case. And you are skating on thin ice. This case is about catching a monster. Ladies and gentlemen, I am that innocent suspect. You are skating on thin ice, partner. The media has convicted Ted before he's had his day in court. I'm gagged, and you're not. I wonder whether he did it or not. I'm more popular than Disney. And I won't tell you what that thing is. So you're gonna have to go and watch the movie to figure it out. Well, that thing undressed Ted of all of his lies. He finally confessed to at least 30 homicides between 1974 till 1978. On January 20th, 24th, 1989, Ted Bundy was executed in the electric chair in Florida State Prison. His brain was removed in the name of science and it was then when researchers found some brain injuries that proved to be the cause behind his criminality which made him an invisible psychopath. It is part of the history of the Pacific Northwest. It's part of the history of criminal justice in the United States. It's a story worth telling. 
Who was this young man in the Pacific Northwest? He knew how to flatter people. He knew how to win their trust. He was good looking and charming and seemingly had the world in his grasp and was gonna be a successful guy. There were two Bundys. The only people that ever saw the diabolical Bundy were his victims. I never wanted to think people were born evil, but my opinion about that changed when I met Ted. I think he was just born evil. His body was burnt and his ashes were scattered in Washington's Cascade Mountains as he requested. There are a variety of films and books inspired by that man's deeds, such as uh, in the category of films, we have um, The River Man in 2004, Bendy, an American icon, 2008. In the category of books, we have The Stranger Beside Me in 1980 and The Only Living Witness in 2012. 